Hello Grade 10s! Today we will begin this series in which we look at electromagnetic waves and radiation. Now when you hear those words, you might think of dangerous nuclear material sending out radiation, but that is not what we will be doing today. Cell phones, TV and TV remote controls, electric gate controls and microwave ovens all work by electromagnetic waves. The radio you listen to receives electromagnetic waves and produces sound waves. Any warm object, such as a cup of tea, radiates electromagnetic waves and you can feel the energy on your skin. Light itself is an electromagnetic wave and your eyes have nerves that respond to it. Electromagnetic waves travel outwards from all these things and we receive or use energy from these waves all the time. The sun radiates electromagnetic radiation and our eyes sense some of it and our skin senses other parts of it. To radiate means to send out energy and radiation is a means of transferring energy from a source to anything that can absorb the energy. A radio broadcast tower needs a lot of energy from ESCOM because when it broadcasts it radiates an electromagnetic wave. Now let's look more closely at that wave. Your skin, your eyes, your ears and TV set do not respond to that radiation, but your radio does. The radio responds because it is tuned to the frequency of the wave that is being radiated. You've surely heard the word frequency before when you learnt about waves. Well, a radio is made to respond to certain frequencies of electromagnetic waves. Look at the tuning dial of the radio here. It has two bands or sets of frequencies. The FM band is the frequencies from 88 to 108 MHz. And the medium wave band is the frequencies from 530 kHz to 1710 kHz. The SAFM station broadcasts on 104.6 MHz and YFM on 99.2 MHz. Now the sound you hear is not an electromagnetic wave. Your ears respond to a sound wave coming from the loudspeaker that is vibrating. But the loudspeaker vibrates because it receives energy from the electromagnetic wave that the broadcast tower sends out. The 99.2 MHz means that the wave arrives at 99.2 million wavelengths per second. That frequency results from the vibration of electrons in the broadcast tower. 99.2 million times a second is a very fast vibration, but then electrons are so small that they can vibrate very fast. Some radio stations use a different set of frequencies. For example, the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, broadcasts to Africa on 3,255, 6,190 and 7,325 kilohertz. Radio engineers name these slower frequencies by their wavelength and these stations are called short wave stations. Over the shorter distances the police and ships use VHF which stands for very high frequency. TV uses its own set of frequencies and your cell phone uses the frequency of 900 MHz or 1800 MHz. A microwave oven uses a frequency of 2450 MHz. A TV remote control uses a still higher frequency called infrared. So now we have used two ideas, frequency and wavelength, that you learnt about when doing sound waves. You may remember that frequency and wavelength are connected and the connection is in the speed of the wave which is constant for the medium the wave travels in. Let's stop for a moment and do a recap of waves. Remember how a wave travels through a medium? Here you see how a disturbance is passed on from one particle to the next. The connection between wavelength and frequency is in this relationship. The speed of the wave is V and it is equal to the wavelength lambda multiplied by the frequency f. If the wave is traveling through air, air is called the medium. Waves can travel through other media too, such as steel or wood. 
Now you must make friends with the relationship between wavelength and frequency because you'll need it often. You can't simply memorize it as a formula. Think of a train with long wagons passing a pole. Each time you hear a pip, that means a wagon has gone past. Another train going at the same speed has shorter wagons. Listen to the pips now as the train passes the pole. Now let's imagine that the pips represent a frequency and the wagons represent the wavelength. What is the relationship between the frequency and the wavelength? Put it in words. Remember that both the trains were going at the same speed. Try it like this. The higher the frequency, the longer the wavelength. The speed is constant, so if frequency increases, then the wavelength decreases and vice versa. In mathematical language, we write it like this. V equals F times lambda. V is the product of multiplying F and lambda together. V stays the same, so if F increases, then wavelength lambda must decrease. Now try to put it in words again. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. Now it turns out that the relationship between speed, frequency and wavelength is true also for electromagnetic waves. We write the relationship slightly differently, like this. C is equal to lambda multiplied by F. C stands for the speed of light. Scientists find that radio waves and other kinds of electromagnetic radiation travel at the same speed as light. Electromagnetic waves, however, don't need a physical medium like air or water to travel through. They can travel through empty space and pass unchanged through many substances. For example, radiation from the sun travels 150 million kilometers through space to transfer some of the sun's energy to Earth as light and heat. Many TV and radio signals travel thousands of kilometers to satellites far up in space where there is no air and the satellites strengthen them and send them back to Earth. And that's all for this lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.ca.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.